This video is sponsored by Viking Jewelry. More on that later. Hello number ones, welcome back to my channel, this is the Metatron speaking. So today we are talking about the 5 things that filmmakers and video game makers always get wrong about the Vikings. So without further ado, let's get to it. So the first thing that usually people get wrong in movies and video games is the Viking shield. And the shield is a big deal in Viking society. And that's why I decided to start with this one on this video. So the shield used by the Norse is very characteristic. Now, although it might seem like a simple construction, there are a lot of things that can be said about a Viking or Norse shield. So this is not one of those shields that have got two straps and you just put your arm inside the straps and you hold it that way. That kind of round shield existed, but it's not the Norse shield. It's a kind of shield that was used, for example, in Italy much, much later, and it was called the Rotella. And usually these ones wouldn't have a boss. Occasionally they would, but generally speaking, they wouldn't. The Norse shield, you hold it in the center, and therefore it needs to have a hole for your hand to grip it. And that is the reason why you've got a boss in the center. It has two main functionalities. The first one and the most important one is to protect the hand. Because of the fact it's center grip, it means that you need to have a space for your hand. And therefore, if you, if you didn't have a boss, your hand would be hit constantly and you wouldn't be able to use the shield. Therefore, that's the main and primary function of a boss. But the secondary function of a boss, of course, is that of reinforcement. And, and that's probably one of the reasons why in later examples, such as the Norman kite shield, even though it, didn't, it was not center bossed usually anymore, uh, they still kept the, uh, the boss, the metal boss in the center. Sometimes it was mostly for aesthetic reasons, but generally speaking, a small boss in the center also helps increasing the protective value and capability of the shield because again, the center is the center of mass and it's where it's more likely for arrows and missile weapons to hit. So for example, in this game, For Honor, they, they got it right with the warlord, so the hero, but they got it wrong with the minions who seem to be using instead late medieval kind of shields and, and again unfortunately it's not the only situation in which we see this mistake being made. Also the rim of the shield. Generally speaking the rim of the shield can be either made of iron or rawhide leather. In video games and movies instead we see a complete usage of iron, constantly iron. I've never seen once a Viking shield with a leather or rawhide rim and it's a shame because we know that they used both. Now we don't know to what extent they used one or the other and unfortunately in the archaeological evidence of course the iron rim is more commonly found than the rawhide rim because obviously the rawhide rim being organic deteriorates a lot more than iron does under certain circumstances. But we know that they were used, so I think it would be nice to see a bit less uniformity. Rather than having every single Norse in every Viking movie or Viking inspired video game using a round shield with an iron rim, it would be nice to see a little bit of less uniformity. In fact, uniformity is the next thing they're gonna bring up. Exaggerated uniformity is a big problem. All the shields look exactly the same, they're all painted the same, they all have the same size, they all have the same rim, and they also have the same boss. Everything looks the same, but that's not how things were back in the day. We know for a fact that this size of shields varied a lot, some being actually quite big, being able to cover the uh, person using it from the knee up to the clavicle, others would have been smaller. Even the amount of planks used, sometimes four, sometimes eight, varied. The thickness varied, usually being thicker in the center and tapering out towards the, the edges of the shield. As far as we know, all bosses were made of iron. Maybe some would have been made of steel, but the shape of the flange, the wall, and the cone would have varied. Some being more conical, some being more rounded and domed. All right, now I'd like to take a moment to thank the team at Viking Jewelry because they have sent me this absolutely stunning set which represents Yggdrasil, or to be more correct with the pronunciation in Old Norse, Yggdrasil, the immense mythological tree that connects the nine worlds. Now, both the pendant and the earrings are made of sterling silver, and I think it makes for a very cool Valentine gift, perfect both for men 
and women. Now is the time to go check out their site because you can get a 30% discount on the entire first line range with the code META30. This 30% discount will be valid for 48 hours from the release of this video. You will find a link in the description below. So make sure to click it, check it out. There are a lot of really cool things on their site. I'm sure you'll find something you like. There is a lot of bronze and silver and I love both metals, so highly recommend it. Also, another problem that I often see is that every time, all the time, Viking shields are represented with the painting being painted directly on the planks and sometimes not even painted, and you can see the planks directly. It's not to be said that it was never done to paint the shields directly onto the wood, but generally speaking, it would be a lot more common to have Viking shields covered in either linen or leather. A cover helps a lot. It protects the shield from the weather. It protects it from excessive sunlight and the wet. It helps keeping the planks together. It helps maintaining structural integrity. It avoids splinter of the wood. So it is a shame that this is never done in video games and movies. It's always the bare planks making just a rough job. The next point is general personal cleanliness. Again, another problem that we have in the representation of Viking society is this idea that they were again brutes, raiders who were dirty, they didn't clean themselves with their beard being all full of mud and their clothes being full of mud and basically just wearing ragged clothes and uh, they weren't clean, they were dirty because they were, you know, raiders and barbarians and plundering and killing and so even maybe even leaving blood on their face. That is absolutely not true. There is a huge, enormous amount of evidence that the Norse people, the ancient Scandinavians, were particularly prone to being clean. The amount of archaeological finds of comms, for example, both in Ireland but also in Scandinavia shows that most people, men and women, would have been groomed and clean. And what's interesting is that we find combs not only in the burial sites of the nobility, but also in burial sites of the common people. And the next point is the general trend in the uh, colors and the way they would dress. And what we see in the movies and video game industry is this idea of, again, a Viking wearing ragged clothes. And the problem with this is that it ignores completely the class structure we had in Norse society. People were divided into four classes. You've got the slaves, you've got the free men and women, the cars, you've got the Jarl, who were people born in, into nobility, and then you have the royals, the kings and queens. Depending on which rung of the social scale the person you're representing in a movie or a game belongs to, that should dictate the quality of his clothing and how well he's dressed and also the kind of colors he would be wearing. So yes, if he is a slave that we are seeing, then of course, you know, his life would be miserable. But already the free men and women, so the with basically represented the majority of Norse men and women at the time, they would have freedom of speech, they had the right to bear arms. A few of these would be wealthy, other, others wouldn't depending on, on the situation, but it, that doesn't mean that they would be wearing, again, rugged clothes that are just brown and black and grey, miserable. We know that people at this time appreciated vivid colours such as yellows, blues, greens and reds, but definitely a Jarl or a king would have been taken pride in complex, clean and beautiful to look at sophisticated clothes. And moving to the next point, we are going to talk about uh, armor. So did the, the Norse wear armor? And the quick answer to this is again, it depends on what rung of the social class we're talking about. If it's a king, if it's a queen, absolutely. Helmet, metal helmet, high quality male shield, all of this is what we would have expected to see a king or a queen wear. And the same you can say about the Yards. So this idea of Yards going into battle just using their shield is stupid because they had the money and the wealth to get good armor. They knew how to make good armor. The only problem is that it was exceptionally expensive. So if a Norse of that period had the means, he would have worn armor. The idea of, oh, no, they wouldn't wear armor because they wanted to be quick and they didn't want the armor to slow them down is stupid and it's very ignorant. If they had the means, they would have worn it. The same can be said for the second rung, so the free men and women, if they had the money, so if they were successful, um, then yes, they would have had some, some degree of armor. The first thing would have been a helmet but if they could afford a male shirt or a male hauberk, they would have. Of course, if we go down into the lower 
lower areas, middle class, then possibly the shield and a helmet would have been more common and just going into battle or raids with normal clothes. Slaves obviously wouldn't have anything, uh, but I think that that's obvious also because they didn't have the right to bear arms. And the final point is going to be about weapons. So what weapons do Vikings, should Vikings use? And I like it that now finally we are starting to see the Viking Age swords being used together in combination with the, with the Norse shield. But um, it is important to remember that a sword is a very expensive object. So again, it's something that we should see used and owned by the upper echelon. So Jarls, Kings, absolutely. But the lower ranks would probably of society. So for example, free men who didn't have much money they were going to fight and they only could afford to wear normal clothing and a helmet probably would have used a shield and a, and a spear that would have been the most common kind of weapon reused by most vikings in combat two-handed axes would be a thing as well specifically for certain special cause but the general most used weapon would have been the spear and then of course sometimes the sacks depending on the person all right, number ones, well, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember thumbs up. And if you're still not yet members of this community, become a noble one. Subscribe to my channel for more content from the Metatron. Also, remember that I've got a Twitch channel called Metatron Gemini or Metatron Gemini. Make sure to follow me there. I stream every Sunday at 3 p.m. Central Time. And don't forget to take advantage of the Metatron 30 code to get a 30% discount from Viking Jewelry. And remember, the Metatron has spread his wings. Goodbye. Thank you